Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or at my website, uh, www.josiesartschool.com. Let's start with some words from the book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Resistance and support. Have you ever been to a workshop? These boondoggles are colleges of resistance. They ought to give out PhDs in resistance. What better way of avoiding work than going to a workshop? But what I hate even worse is the word support. Seeking support from friends and family is like having your people gathered around at your deathbed. It's nice, but when the ship sails, all they can do is stand on the dock waving goodbye. Any support we get from persons of flesh and blood is like monopoly money. It's not legal tender in that sphere where we have to do our work. In fact, the more energy we spend stoking up on support from colleagues and loved ones, the weaker we become and the less capable of handling our business. My friend Carol had the following dream at a time when her life felt like it was careening out of control. She was a passenger on a bus. Bruce Springsteen was driving. Suddenly, Springsteen pulled out, pulled over, handed Carol the keys, and bolted. In the dream, Carol was panicking. How could she drive this huge, rolling greyhound? By now, all the passengers were staring. Clearly, no one else was going to step forward and take charge. Carol took the wheel. To her amazement, she found she could handle it. Later, analyzing the dream, she figured Bruce Springsteen was the boss, the boss of her psyche. The bus was the miracle, was the vehicle of her life. The boss was telling Carol it was time to take the wheel. More than that, the dream, by actually setting her down in the driver's seat and letting her feel that she could control the vehicle on the road, was providing her with a simulator run to prime her with the confidence that she could actually take command in her life. A dream like that is real support. It's a check you can cash when you sit down, alone, to do your work. P.S. When your deeper self delivers a dream like that, don't talk about it. Don't dilute its power. The dream is for you. It's between you and your muse. Shut up and use it. The only exception is you may share it with another comrade in arms if sharing it will help or encourage that comrade in his or her endeavors. From the Firestarter Sessions by Daniel Laporte. When being real is your priority, the various parts of your life start to groove. Your career will begin to reflect your true passion. Your living room will match your values. Your friends will fit your soul. And your wealth, of which there are many definitions, will start to measure up with the, nat- with the notion of freedom. Sometimes the courage to be true to yourself comes in the form of an out loud declaration a rebellion, or a love-drenched vow. Other times, it's a quiet conviction that we can read in your eyes. Mighty or discreet, authenticity is the muscle that helps you shake up beliefs, policies, and restraints, and gives you the strength to do the things some say can't be done. Being genuine is the foundation of integrity. Often inconvenient, and not always painless, but the only way to go if you're really, truly, fully alive. Being your true self is the most effective formula for success that there is. They don't tell us that in most schools or time management seminars. 
and not many employee manuals instruct you to be strategic with your desires, leverage your contradictions, say no to resentment and yes to inspiration, make ease a metric of success. These precepts are kindling for your soul fire. They are the pathways to what you truly want, and they are the reason that you exist. Our soul fire is ancient and integral in each of us, inextinguishable, but susceptible to being dimmed to faintness. It can get cloaked in layers of self-doubt. We doubt the practicality of enthusiasm and the legitimacy of our impulses. We doubt that breaking the rules will earn us a raise or speaking in the first person will attract the right clients. We worry that our shine will be construed as showing off and we'll get shot down. Or that if we really let our opinions flare, we'll burn bridges that we may need to cross again later, someday. Self-doubt is so insidious that it not only renders us stuck in our lives, but it also actually weakens our ability to dream about what living unleashed would look like. And here's the thing. The mere act of dreaming is a vitalizing, life-affirming endeavor. As it turns out, using your imagination is very, very good for your well-being. Einstein believed that imagination was even more important than knowledge itself. Dying by Rumi. Remember, there is a great incapacitator. God gave you this inability for some reason. Ask why. Say, I have tried, but I'm in a losing business. I did what you warned me not to. I claim not to love the world's images but I've been worshiping them. <laughs>